folks, Scott here with the My Monthly Hero June 2020 card kit. I finally received my June kit on Monday, July 6th, so I hope you're getting yours or have already received it. This is the Northern Lights kit. We get a 4 by 6 inch stamp set this month with a, a whale, a eagle, a moon, a sailboat, looks like a narwhal, the uh, spout of a whale, some flourishes, follow your own true north, you are wonderful, you are a beacon of light, let your dreams set sail. A little bit smaller stamp set this month because we are treated to this terrific Northern Lights rubber stamp. Northern Lights 6 by 6 inch rubber stamp. A beautiful Northern Lights stamp. A gorgeous, gorgeous stamp. Can't wait to play with that. We do get some die cuts as well. We've got three fancy scene dies. So we've got this trees and a cabin scene. We've got this lighthouse scene and also this mountainside scene. So those are our three fancy dies. We also get 10 coordinating frame cuts. So that's for the moon and the sailboat, our little flourishes, the bird, the narwhal, the whale. Frame cut dies for all of our images in our stamp set. We do get some terrific add-ons in this kit too. We get four sheets. This is eight and a half by five and a half of handmade black watercolor paper. Very interesting. We also get a tube of a glow in the dark lacquer pen. A glow in the dark lacquer pen. Can't wait to try that out. <laughs> and also a package of shiny silver stars. As always, they give us a huge bunch of stars. This is absolutely a gorgeous kit. Of course, it sold out immediately upon release. I'm really looking forward to diving into this one and making some cards. Looks like we are heading away north this time. Here we go. Got all white card bases. I've got one Hero Hughes Mist card base, which we actually got in the My Monthly Hero March of 2020 kit. Now, I may be blowing a lot of smoke here, but I like to think that I helped inspire this kit. This is a card I made of the Aurora Borealis with the July 2019 kit last year, so 11 months ago, and I am going to pat myself on the back and say that I actually helped inspire this kit with that great Aurora Borealis cling stamp. So let's dig right in. When we get scene cuts in our die cuts, I often will just cut them them out first thing just to see what they look like see what I can do with them that's the first thing I did with this kit the mountains the little cabin in the woods and the lighthouse and I turned to one of those for my first card on a white card base we've got you are a beacon of light with that terrific lighthouse fancy die <laughs> I took my die cut lighthouse and I colored that with my spectrum noir alcohol markers I did put a piece of paper behind that to uh, fill in all of the open spaces I colored those all as if they were shadows and who can resist putting stripes on that great lighthouse there <laughs> I took a piece of plain white cardstock this is four inches by five and a quarter and I masked off the sky and I ink blended the sea using hero hues blue Hawaii and splash inks I inked those up and then I took the bottom part of that cling stamp and embossed that on the sea with some clear embossing powder so you can see there's some nice shine in our ocean there I then reversed the mask and I inked up the sky with fruit punch reactive ink and some black soot distress oxide ink I then spattered in some white stars in that sky using my permanent white gouache watercolor paint and then I stamped this sentiment with some Versamark ink embossed that with some white embossing powder then I decided where I wanted my lighthouse to go and sketched in a couple of lines for the light beams I first colored those light beams with a white colored pencil I thought that would show up on the black pretty well 
I didn't really think it was bright enough, so I put some yellow on top of that, and that didn't seem bright enough either, so I actually grabbed my permanent white watercolor again and mixed that down with some water and then painted that over the top. So that came out exactly how I wanted it, nice and bright. It's shining on our sentiment over here. I actually put a little piece of glitter paper in the lamp house up there. So there's a little sparkle in the lamp house, some lovely stars in the background. You are a beacon of light. I really love that lighthouse die cut. Just so much fun and really kind of stunning. Okay, so of course I'm dying to play with that Aurora Borealis stamp. <laughs> that great big cling stamp. On a white card base we've got Follow your own true north. Oh, I like this so much. I wanted to try that cling stamp with some unicorn white pigment ink. So I set that cling stamp in my Misty and I stamped a half a piece of that black watercolor paper with some white unicorn ink. And I let that dry. I let that dry at least 24 hours. And then I went in with my Pearl Essent watercolors. These are really inexpensive watercolors. These are Yasutomo Pearl Essent watercolors. I went in with these watercolors and I colored all the Aurora Borealis with those watercolors using the blues and the greens. It came out really nice. That shimmer Pearl Essent watercolor really gives a nice sense of shine to those Borealis lights there. But I was a little surprised to find that the unicorn ink started reacting again with the water. I thought since it was a pigment ink that it would stay permanent, but it started reacting again with the watercolors. I wasn't worried about that though because I had left my clink stamp in my Misty in the exact same place. So I figured I could stamp that again, which is what I did after I watercolored all of the sky and I watercolored the ocean using the same inks. I put that back in my Misty, stamped it again with some unicorn ink, and then embossed that stamp with some clear embossing powder. So all of those lines have got a little shine to them. The Aurora Borealis has got some great light and shine to it. I love this. It is so pretty. I die cut our little whale tail and did a little dry brushing on him with some of those same pearl essence inks. And then I cut a slit between some of the lines in the sea, slipped my whale tail in that slit, put a piece of foam tape behind his tail for a little extra dimension there. I stamped this sentiment on a piece of pitch black Hero Hughes cardstock, stamped that with Versamark ink and embossed that with some white embossing powder, cut that down into a banner and glued that to my card front with some foam tape. This is our first Aurora Borealis card this month. Follow your own true north. I really, really like this one. <laughs> now, I thought since that pearl essence watercolor works so well, I wondered how the glimmer metallic inks would work. We've gotten some glimmer metallic inks in our kit. I used the aqua glimmer metallic and the gold glimmer metallic ink for this card. Another one done on that homemade black watercolor paper on a white card base we've got. Let your dreams set sail. Again, bright and shiny. I tell you, use any kind of reflective ink in those Aurora Borealises and they look like they are shining. I did this the exact same way I did my first card. I stamped it with unicorn ink, let it dry, went in with the glimmer inks for the Borealis and added some in the ocean for the sea as well. And then I put that all back in my Misty, stamped it again with the white unicorn ink and then embossed on top of that. So everything's got a nice shine. I die cut the mountain fancy scene from some more pitch black cardstock and I put a piece of black glitter paper behind that. I really like the shine that gives. It looks very nighttime to me, that glitter. 
glitter in all of those cutouts of the mountains. I stamped this sailboat on a piece of jet black cardstock using some soft granite ink and then I also used some blue Hawaii ink. A combination of those two inks to stamp that sailboat. I die cut it and then added little gold highlights to that with a little gold sharpie. I did add some gold highlights to the edges of the mountains as well just using that gold glimmer metallic ink. I did stamp this sentiment right on top of all of that embossing. It's a little lumpy because it's embossing on top of embossing but it came out well. I was very pleased with that. Let your dreams set sail. I really love the shine and the shimmer and I love that black watercolor paper too. <laughs> okay so I did a couple of cards on that black watercolor paper and embossed the stamp with white on top. What would happen if I did that in reverse? So on another white card base we've got you are wonderful, Aurora Borealis. <laughs> Look at the shine on this. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm having so much fun with that gigantic cling stamp. What a great background stamp. Now, I actually stamped that entire stamp on just a plain piece of white paper, and I put that on my light board and put a cardstock on top of that and ink blended this whole card using some Distress Oxide inks. I used pickled raspberry and evergreen bough and cracked pistachio and broken china and blueprint sketch. I also used a lot of black soot. So it kind of looks like a hot mess before I do any stamping, but that's what I was shooting for. I then put that card panel in my Misty and I stamped that Aurora Borealis cling stamp using VersaFine Onyx Black ink and embossed that with some more clear embossing powder. Look at the shine on that. Absolutely stunning. I really love the colors on this card. It looks quite different. I mean, it's obviously the same stamp, but it has a totally different feel from those first two cards. I really like this one. I actually die cut that panel with a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die, matted that on a piece of black glitter card stock from my stash. I stamped the sentiment again on Hero Hughes pitch black cardstock, embossed that with white, cut that to a banner, and then added that to my card front with some foam tape. I did go through and I added a whole bunch of dots of that glow in the dark lacquer pen. And that looks like stars when you're looking at it. And believe it or not, that lacquer pen does glow in the dark when the lights are out. It's daytime here, or I'd turn the lights out for you and show you. It's hard to capture that, but that glow in the dark lacquer pen does work. A really fun card. You are wonderful. <laughs> okay, so those actually cover the four sentiments that were in our stamp set. So I can start working with my own sentiments now. I had one more technique that I wanted to try with that cling stamp. So for card number five, on a white card base, we've got I'm Blue Without You, featuring a lovely blue whale and a moon in the sky. And this is some emboss resist stamping. I actually took a piece of pattern paper. This is just some nice, soft, watercolory pattern paper I had in my stash. And I stamped the stamp on that using Versamark ink and then clear embossed it. And then I went through and I did ink blending on top of that embossing using Blueprint Sketch and Black Soot Distress Oxide inks. Wiped off the excess off of the top of that embossing, and this is what we got. Again, another totally different look using that same stamp. Of course, I'm using the left side of this stamp here, <laughs> so it is a little different. I cut that piece in half. I did a whole six by six inch piece. I just went ahead and embossed and inked up a whole six by six inch piece of that paper and I cut this one in half and then cut three little different widths off of the right side of that 
I stamped the moon on some light blue cardstock using the Soft Sky Hero Arts ink, and I stamped the whale using the Blue Hawaii Reactive inks. I die cut both of those out. I added the white highlights on the whale using the Unicorn White Pigment ink from Hero Arts, and then I also used some alcohol markers and a little white gel pen to add some texture to that whale as he's coming out of the water. Again, I cut a little slit between the lines in the ocean and slipped my whale in there. A little foam tape behind his top gives him some dimension. The moon is attached directly to this background. I did print this sentiment directly on my card base using my piggyback printing method, and this is the Paprika font. That's a silhouette font. I'm blue without you. I glued this background and the three strips directly to a white card base with little bitty white lines between all of them. I thought that was really fun and it really echoed the vertical lines of that stamp. I'm blue without you, a great fun monochromatic card. I'm blue without a lot of people right now. <laughs> I really like the emboss resist with that stamp. It really doesn't feel like Aurora Borealis anymore, just a really cool sky. I'm blue without you, great whale splashing out of the water. Okay, enough with that Aurora Borealis stamp. Let's get back to some of our fancy scene die cuts. On our next card here, we've got Let's Get Away From It All <laughs> with that great cabin and forest die. This is really fun. Again, I took that die cut and I colored all of that with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. I did put a piece of paper behind that and colored that to fill in all of the openings in the die. This time I tried filling those openings with more of a highlight than a shadow. I thought that worked really nicely. I thought that was a a uh, very interesting look, especially on the rocks here. I thought it worked very well. And of course, with some light streaming from that cabin. <laughs> I did the C on this card the exact same way I did the C on my lighthouse card. That is, again, ink blended with Blue Hawaii and Splash Reactive inks. And then I did stamped the bottom of our cling stamp with the Versamark ink and embossed that with some clear embossing powder. So there's some nice shine in the ocean there. I then reversed the masks and I ink blended the background here. Wanted a little bit of a halo around my private island. <laughs> so I used some squeezed lemonade and spice marmalade and candied apple and a touch of wilted violet distress oxide inks and of course my black soot. I then spattered some stars in the sky using my same permanent white gouache watercolor paint. I cut that panel down with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die, added that to a plain black mat, and then down to a white card base. I printed this sentiment again using my silhouette software and this is with the copper plate gothic bold font worked really well i trimmed that out and then i embossed that whole sentiment with some clear embossing powder so that has some nice shine to it there i know there's not an apostrophe on the let's but i thought it interrupted that sentiment a little bit so i just took it off <laughs> i did finally add three little silver stars from our kit up in the night sky over here just for a touch more shine. Oh, I wish that island was my own. <laughs> I think the lights inside that cabin are really inviting. Okay, so we're getting to the point in my 10 cards here where I'm starting to look hard for card ideas. And oftentimes when I'm looking for a new card idea, I will focus in on just a single stamp in a stamp set. So this is my next card on a white card base. We've got Fly Like an Eagle with that great bird stamp colored up like an eagle. 
Fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle. Let my spirit carry me. I want to fly like an eagle. <laughs> Any Steve Miller band fans out there? I'm afraid that is dating me, isn't it? <laughs> now, I took a, a Simon Says Stamp frame die. I took this little frame die and I cut it out of a piece of masking paper and put that masking paper on a white card base and then I stamped the little bird stamp and fussy cut him out and added him in the center of that frame opening so that I didn't ink blend over the bird there. That's my little bitty bird mask right there. I can be obsessive. Yes, I can. <laughs> so then I ink blended the opening through that mask with some Broken China Distress Oxide ink. I added the cloud with a little My Favorite Things Mini Cloud Edges stencil. And then I peeled off the masks. I then took my Prismacolor colored pencils and colored that bird. I'm not sure why I thought it was an eagle, maybe because it had a tiny hook on its beak, but I took my time coloring this eagle and I sharpened all my pencils to the finest possible point to get some nice feathery touches on that eagle. I'm really pleased with this. You know how much I like my white space. <laughs> of course, I did print this sentiment again. This is on, uh, this is the Dream State font in blue again. I printed that directly on my card base using my piggyback printing method. And then I took that die again. And those dies are nice because they cut a little bitty frame out as well. And I cut a little frame using some dark blue pearl essent cardstock and then glued that frame over my inked background there. Came out really nice. Fly like an eagle. I really like this card. Now, who would have thought that you could make a card using just that one little itty bitty stamp from our stamp set? <laughs> okay, here come the puns. <laughs> I could not resist this one. We got that great little narwhal stamp in this set. So I know there are lots of whale puns out there, but I thought the narwhal gave us opportunities for some different puns. So on a white card base, we've got Narwars, the last narwhal. <laughs> I could not resist this. <laughs> now, I actually created this whole background using my Silhouette software. This is actually, believe it or not, the Death Star font <laughs> and the Copper Plate Gothic Bold font in the middle there. I will make a PDF of this, and if anybody wants a PDF of this background, just send me a note over at cardcutups at gmail.com, and I'll send you a copy of my PDF file with all of my sentiments and this great Nar Wars <laughs> background as well. After I printed that and cut it out, I did take our cling stamp and I stamped the C in the bottom here using some Versamark ink and some clear embossing powder. That gave those narwhals some place to come out of. I stamped the narwhals on some Hero Hues pitch black cardstock using the unicorn white ink. I did reverse stamp this one because with the stamp only stamps right. I did reverse stamp this one here. I just use a silicone pen had to do my reverse stamping. It came out really nice. I used my alcohol markers and a white gel pen to give some texture and shape to those two narwhals. And of course, I colored up their two lightsaber tusks <laughs> using my colored pencils. We got our blue one and our red one. We are fighting. This is Nar Wars, after all, <laughs> the last Nar I did add a little soft white glow behind their tusks using that unicorn white ink, and I cut some slits in the little C here and slipped my narwhals into those slits and added little foam pieces behind them to give them just a little bit of dimension. This pun makes me laugh out loud. <laughs> narwhals. Boom, boom.
but it um, <laughs> the last narwhal. <laughs> and I love the fact that their tusks are their little lightsabers. <laughs> A great card for any Star Wars fan or any sci-fi geek on your list. <laughs> Narwars. <laughs> Okay, and here we get to that uh, Hero Hughes Mist cardstock. I've still got half of that piece of that Emboss Resist paper that I use. So let's use that other half on this one. And we've got a Stay Gnarly card. <laughs> okay, Gnarly may be a little bit out of use, <laughs> but I think it's a fun pun. Actually, great fun with this card. Stay Gnarly. I took the other half of my Emboss Resist paper here, and I cut that down to two and three quarter inches wide. I matted that on a piece of white cardstock just for a thin white mat on the two sides. I glued that down to our mist card base and then added a couple of strips of Love From Lizzie silver glitter peel-offs to the sides. I added a whole bunch of those little silver embellishment pieces and I die cut our three star pieces from our dies from some silver glitter cardstock. Again, I stamped the narwhal the same way that I stamped these narwhals with unicorn ink on some pitch black cardstock. I gave him some great texture and color using my alcohol markers and a white gel pen. I really like that narwhal stamp. I think that's the first narwhal stamp I have in my collection. <laughs> Stay gnarly. <laughs> okay, I still have a, a couple of stamps I haven't used in this stamp set yet. And I thought that Spouting Whale gave me the opportunity to do a little interactive card here. On a white card base, we've got you blow me away, congrats, and a little pull tab there for, for our blowhole coming to life from our whale. <laughs> I was a little worried that our whale and its spout wouldn't read very well without the tail, so I stamped both of these pieces on a piece of cardstock, and then I ink blended the C there using some cracked pistachio, a little broken china, some blueprint sketch ink, and then I did emboss that with some clear embossing powder using Using my little homemade sea stencil. I ink blended the sky directly on the card base using spiced marmalade and squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink. I printed this sentiment on the top there using the Arial black font and then I created my little double action pull tab for the spout coming out of the whale. Now, I haven't ever done this before, but I, I cut this little V in my ocean so that I could get the spout to look like it was coming out small and getting larger as it came out instead of coming out all at once in a big bloosh. I could have easily stamped the whale at the top of the horizon line and had the water come out only in the sky, but I thought this was a nice experiment to use. Congrats. Push. <laughs> and I actually think that kind of works. So the first little bits you see look like they're coming straight from his blowhole. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Congrats! <laughs> I've done this double slider pull tab card a number of times. And here's a little bit of the mechanical assembly for this card for you. So these double slider pull tab cards are actually just a variation of the larger ones that uh, you pull one side and the other side comes out. I do have a video going through this. I do have a blog post that talks about this same thing, but I thought I'd show you the basic mechanics of this card. Now this is my mechanism piece. And because our whale is over here, I cut this mechanism piece to not be any taller than the whale. I don't want it to go up past the top of the whale. And of course, the conveyor belt is going to be over here on the side, the pull tab and the conveyor belt over here on the side. So that's my start piece. I've got my little channels already marked on this. I'll just cut those out with my X-Acto knife. Just quick, you do want to make sure that these lines are square to each other and to the cardstock. 
ideally, <laughs> and you cut your little notches in this, and then we're going to wrap our little conveyor belt around those notches. So those notches will keep the conveyor belt from sliding out of place. I have here just a plain, simple plastic bag that I've cut down to be the same width as our mechanical piece. And we're just going to wrap that around and I'm going to add a piece of score tape. This is quarter inch score tape. Piece of score tape to the end of this trash bag. My conveyor belt and then pull the liner up. Of course score tape works great for this. It's going to hang on really well to that trash bag and not slip and slide or come undone. And then we're going to pull this over and we're going to attach those together but we don't want to pull these tight. We want it to be just a little loose so that it moves freely. You don't want to make this so tight that it won't slide up and down. That's about right there. We'll go ahead and take the excess off of our long piece. Just fold that back and give that a chop. And then to decide where our pull tab goes, we'll just move that seam to the top or the bottom. Now, because on this card, my whale spout is coming out behind the ocean, I decided to put my pull tab on the top of my conveyor belt and put my moving spout of water on the back of that conveyor belt. So we're going to pull that down so that the seam is on the bottom of the back. I do have another embossed and die cut on acetate whale spout. I'm going to jump to my eighth inch score tape here. I think my quarter inch is a little too long and I'm going to put that right at the top of that seam on the back and then we can add our acetate piece on top of that. And you can see that the embossed side goes to the front and that pretty much covers up. We're good. We're below the top edge of this so we're going to leave that right where it is on the front we're going to put our score tape at the top of our conveyor belt. I've still got my eighth inch score tape here, but I can just go ahead and use two widths of that. Peel off the liner paper here and then attach our tab right there. Now, of course, our tab is way too long, so let's trim that off at the top of our channel. Doesn't have to be perfect. No one will ever see that. And this is our little mechanical piece that makes the whale spout shoot up, shoot up, disappear, shoot up, disappear. Now, of course, you want to put some foam tape on the front of this, a little bit of foam tape on the back of this. Sometimes I'll use just some scrap cardstock, a couple of layers to give a little room for our pull tab and spout to move. But that's our basic mechanical piece that makes our little pull tab whale spout push work. When I had put this all together, I thought it was really nice, but I felt like there was a little something missing down here. So I actually grabbed a, a lawn fawn. This is the Big Scripty Words stamp set and dies. I have the stamp set and dies, and I use the congrats. I really like this set because the dies are so easy to line up with the stamped words. Came out kind of just perfect there. I really like those large sentiments in that set. I stamped the pull on the bottom here. This is from a My Favorite Things Interactive Labels stamp set. Pull on the bottom of this card and your whale erupts. Whoosh. I did actually think about <laughs> doing a card that said, please wear your mask. <laughs> with this stamp, but I decided a little interactive card would be more fun this month. You blow me away. Push.
<laughs> Congrats! <laughs> so that's my 10 cards using the My Monthly Hero June 2020 card kit. I am looking forward to getting my July card kit. I know San Francisco is having some restrictions pulled back, so I don't think Hero Arts is back to a full staff by any means. I think they are doing an amazing job getting all the kits out to people as well as they are already. I had so much fun putting this together. I adore that great Aurora Borealis stamp. I am sure there are other ways that I can use that stamp. Those scene dies are also terrific. This is a great fun kit. I got a really nice variety of cards here. Of course, I love my eagle as well and narwhars <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your time with me today thank you for visiting my channel please give me a thumbs up if you liked this video it really goes a long way in getting youtube to suggest this video to other people please please take care of yourself take care of your neighbors take care of your family we are not out of the woods yet i have just finished my second week of being furloughed I I was able to get onto the unemployment rolls with no problems. I hope that holds out for a while <laughs> because we still may not be back until the first of the year as far as theater is concerned. Please take care of yourself. Please be well. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Avoid crowds and enclosed spaces. Remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. And as always, I wish you health and happy crafting. If you'd like more detailed information, better pictures, or product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.